Welcome to the Pistons Fanatic. I'm your host, Dave Dalton, and I'm excited to share my passion and perspective of our Detroit Pistons as we go on this fantastic voyage together. I've been a diehard Pistons fan since the days of Dave Bing and Bob Lanier. I've also been a varsity basketball coach of a very successful program. And currently, my daughter and I are coaching one of the best AAU teams in the country. And we got ourselves a player. We got a couple players, actually. We got um, Asar Thompson from the Overtime Elite with our first pick, number five, in the first round. And then we traded and back into the first round late and picked up Marcus Sasser, a small guard from Houston. So let's talk about um, Asar. He is a very gifted player in many ways. He is an elite athlete. He can impact the game in so many ways. Uh, defensively, he is going to be tremendous, and we certainly need, um, at the wing, we need elite defensive players, and I think he's going to bring that. It might take him a little bit of time before he can adapt to the NBA, but I am confident that he's going to be a, a top-flight defensive player for us for years to come. And he has he's a great passer. You know, he, he On his team, he, his brother Amen was the point guard, and he played off ball, but... I've said this before that Amen was the point guard, had the ball in his hands all the time, averaged 6.2 assists. Asur, who didn't have the ball in his hands all the time, averaged 6.1 assists a game. So I'm looking forward to watching him pass the ball. And I know that um, Troy said you can never have too many ball handlers. And that's, you know, and I know that Monty's felt the same way that he felt like, um, you know, you can't, the, the new NBA game, you just have more. Monty said, you know, he told. A sore that he fit uh, where the modern NBA was going, be having multiple facilitators on the court and being able to come off screens and play defense. So that's what he does. I, of course, the big question mark is shooting. I've mentioned it several times where it just is a concern for me. He, he did shoot well at the end and in the playoffs of Overtime Elite. He shot really well from three and made a game-winning three. But you know, it just it is a little bit worrisome because he is 20 years old and he has practiced all the time. And they, these these guys, they have, you know, again, Troy picks the person, not the player. He got some real a real talented player here, but he knows he's a hard worker and a great kid and is going to, you know, fit into our culture really well. So, but he's... Um, he can get out on the break. You know, he's we're going to fly up and down the court with Ivy and... And Asur, we're going to be, I think, seeing some high-flying dunks in transition. Also, just like um, Jaden Ivy, uh, you know, pressured the ball and jumped into passing lanes and got us some easy baskets almost to seem like once every game. And uh, Asur is going to do the same thing. He's also a great cutter. And when you're playing with Cade and Ivy and Duran and you are a good cutter, you're going to get some easy opportunities. And and I really anticipate that that is going to happen. So he won't be a primary point guard. You know, again, I want to see Cade, and then when I want them to see them stagger the minutes with Cade and Ivy and let Ivy play um, the point guard when Cade's not on the floor. But Asur certainly, you know, can handle the ball and certainly make plays and pass the ball and get guys some open looks. So we didn't have that. We, we've been terrible at that. You know, we're one of the worst teams in getting assists, and I think now with Ivy's – um, improved playmaking and Cade's uh, ability to, to make other people better and pass the ball. I think we're just going to be really fun. I think it's going to be a joy to watch. And Asur can get way up over the rim. And he has also not just dunking the ball, but he has these great finishes with either hand. And it, it's going to be exciting. So Troy, Troy said that Asur brings a lot to the table. He's a monster on the open court. And he's going to be a, a real offensive player. And he, he was excited, and again, this goes back to who Troy is. He said he made a strong connection when he visited here. One of the most more humorous things is they, they asked Troy, they said, you know, isn't it hard to scout because he played for Overtime Elite, and Overtime Elite played mediocre competition. They, they had a bunch of kids, 16, 17, and 18. I don't know if there's even another um, NBA prospect in the whole league. And so it's really hard to evaluate when you're seeing – these guys who are elite athletes that are big and strong and fast playing against, you know, these high school kids. So, but Troy's answer was funny. He said, Halle Berry looks pretty in church or in the grocery store. Doesn't, you know, he's saying a player's a player. And if you see a player that's really good, you know, you, um, you can tell. And so that's what he felt about uh, a sore. So 
And Troy also thinks, you know, you can you can never have too many ball handlers. So that is very true. So Asur is he he's tough. He's tough and he's speedy and he's has he's real agile. He's got some power to him. He's strong. I mean, he's not the skinny little guy. He's lean, but he's he is strong. And he weighs you know, well over 200 pounds. He's competitive on defense. That's one thing everybody says, that he is so competitive at the defensive end. And is, he just is going to cause havoc. You know, he's going to, like I said, he's going to junk things up for other teams. And he's going to be all over the court. And, and I don't know. So, like I said, Monty was real impressed with him. And he was, Monty, just, it was Monty's first day when Asura came and the Thompson Twins came to Detroit for their um workout and so that worked out well so Asur was real impressed with our organization and the chemistry he could feel it right away and he knows that it would be a place he said it's going to be a place I, I know that I would feel happy happy to play there he was he just left impressed and he's very familiar with Cade he said he he watched Cade and Cade was his fa favorite player in the draft in 2021 he said a men's favorite player was Jalen Green and so a little bit ironic that now um, Asura gets to play with Cade, who he thought was the best player in that draft, and Amen gets to play with Jalen Green, who he thought was the best player in the draft. So that was that's pretty cool. But um, they asked him what he was um, thought he could show at the next level, and he said, "My my finishing at the rim, and that he he can be better at catching and shooting, and coming off screens." So I just I, I I'm thrilled with this pick. You know, I, I did want Cam Whitmore. It's a shock. I, I, I can't wait to hear. Hopefully tomorrow we'll find out why um, Cam dropped to 20 when everybody, I, so it wasn't just me. You know, I, I can be wrong for sure. But um, Hollinger, who was a great draft expert, he had him third on his big board in the entire draft. And uh, so did Sam Bassini. I think he had him third also. And the... Um, no ceilings guys who are, you know, they really go in depth. They work year round studying this draft and each player and breaking them down over and over again. And, and they thought he would be, go by number five for sure and that, and that he was a perfect fit for the Pistons. So something leaked out. You know, a guy doesn't just fall from, you know, number uh, five and, and every mock draft to number 20. But there was some uh, speculation that there was something to do with his medicals. So... We don't know, but uh, I'm happy with the SAR and, you know, Dwayne, I mean, Troy um, said he was going to go for the big swing and a player with lots of potential. And I'm going to tell you, Amin is even a better athlete, but there are many people, there were lots of NBA teams, I mean, I, can't, I don't know if lots, but there were several at least NBA teams that had a SAR ranked higher than a men. So I, I think we got ourselves a player, another player to add, and he's got that the good length seven foot wingspan and I think he's gonna um, be a great addition to our, our core and and again we we needed to get better at defense especially on the wing and we just did so Marcus Sasser we drafted we we had the 31st pick but we traded up to get the 25th pick and we also had to trade two second round future draft picks to Boston to get that pick so obviously Troy was infatuated with Marcus Sasser and my thing is he's he's only 6'2 so that's hard there's not there's more fewer and fewer 6'2 guards playing in the NBA anymore if you if you watch and you know a lot of teams like you know you look at Denver Nuggets they won the championship I mean they didn't ever put anybody on the floor I don't think that was shorter than 6'5 or 6'6 so we'll see but he is you know he's choice kind of guy he um, is tougher than nails and just a dog on defense. He just busts his butt every minute and he makes it a nightmare for whoever he's guarding. So he he's also a real good shooter. He was uh, he um, averaged 16.8 points a game on a really good team, and that's that's hard to do in college. And shot 38 percent on three. So he he's a shooter. So he's going to be like a microwave, like Benny Johnson was coming off the bench and. Uh, he still averaged three and three over three assists, and um, it is curious. So, what is the future of Killian Hayes? And so, you know, we have Ivy Cade, R.J. Hampton, and Killian, and 
there's just not a ton of minutes for all those guys. So I, I it'll be interesting to see what happens. So um, there can still be more trades or different things can happen or, you know, they can just fight it out, you know, in training camp and see who makes it. I will say this, that I, I a lot of people really like Marcus Sasser and I do. I just, I'm surprised because everybody said, you know, we needed wings and we needed guys that could play defense, but we, we passed on a bunch of forwards that I think were really good. You know, I, I, Bryce Sensible, I'm not thrilled with him. He's kind of a – he's not very quick or fast, and he, but he's a scorer. He's kind of a gunner. So I, I wasn't – he's from Ohio State too, so I'm not sure I liked him anyway. But Colby Jones, I love Colby Jones. He's from Xavier. He is – everything about Colby Jones I love. So I was – I would love to get that pick at 25. Ryan Repair from France, he was good. A lot of you I know have mentioned and heard talks about Gigi Jackson, and he is – the youngest player in the draft and full of potential has a lot of little uh, alarms go off with his personality and stuff. But I think he's was just a little bit immature, but he is still, everybody said, you know, he has some of the highest upside in this draft and, you know, we passed on him, but Leonard Miller was good. Maxwell Lewis was a freak athlete. Julian Strother from Gonzaga. I loved him, he, but he, he's a guard, but he's six, seven. So anyway, Marcus Sasser, we had some tough guards. Uh, you remember Mike James and Lindsey Hunter? They would come in and just dog people out. They would just they were so tough on defense and they would you know, they'd come in off the bench and they would just instantly, you know, create havoc on the court and bring lots of energy and toughness. And so we will hope that Marcus Sasser does the same. So there's still free agency coming up and at the end of uh, June, or officially opens, you can sign people on July 1st, and I um, we're still going to see, uh, hopefully, Cameron Johnson. Hopefully, we can um, offer, make him an offer, and hopefully, somehow, we can get him on our team. So, But thank you for listening. If you're listening on um, YouTube, please subscribe and leave a thumbs up. Do something nice for somebody today, and go Pistons!